The Gaumont, Finchley, a provincial cinematograph theatres limited property, opened on Monday, July the 19th, 1937. Situated on an imposing island site, it was for many years surrounded by trolleybus wires, there being a major terminus on the north side of the cinema. The street scene at Tally Ho Corner represented the best in 1930s urban environment, with the sleek, curved super cinema providing a perfect backcloth to the streamlined, silent trolley buses. The main frontage was built of brick with facings in reconstructed granite. To the left of the facade was a semicircular tower which was in advance of the main building line. The tower provided a waiting area on the ground floor and above was part of the cafe, the windows of which extended in an unbroken line along the whole face of the building. To the right of the facade was a large space for programme announcements. A concrete and glass canopy extended from the side of the tower along the length of the main facade. Immediately under the canopy was another Gaumont name sign, set in a recessed panel which surmounted the main entrance doors. The architects were W. E. Trent, his son W. Sidney Trent and R. Golding. The semicircular entrance hall was paved in terrazzo and the walls were lined with vertical walnut boards. The ceiling was plain apart from a narrow semicircular panel and carried six drop pendant light fittings of a globular pattern. From the back of the pay boxes two pillars decorated with metallic leaf rose to the underside of an indirect lighting trough. The balcony foyer led to both circle and cafe. The café restaurant could hold 120 persons and its wide panoramic windows afforded fine views of the street scene below. The auditorium seated 2,165, 1,390 in the stalls and 775 in the circle. Decoration was carried out in the modern Swedish style of shades of peach picked out with gold, silver and green. At the base of the walls there was a dado of cork carpet inset with wood fillets. The side walls were decorated with a series of vertical bands in decorative grille style. The sides of the proscenium were formed by slender reeded columns supporting a projecting hood which was surmounted by ornamental ventilation grills. The main ceiling had a fluted, boarded bay surrounded by a recessed panel incorporating a series of shallow domes. From these, the main auditorium lights were suspended. These nine light fittings had cone stems terminating in a metal-bound glass ball. Their extended arms carried glass cup fitments. The general atmosphere was intimate and comfortable, the orange-coloured house lights conveying a cosy feeling. The backstage area had six dressing rooms, two chorus rooms plus ample property space. The operating box originally contained three projectors, two Steiner arcs, three high-intensity spot arcs and a Brenograph that could produce almost any visual effect. The three-manual nine-rank Compton organ with melatonin was mounted on a revolving lift to the left of the proscenium. Frederick Baco gave the opening recital. The Gaumont was the only theatre in the London area to retain its original name until it closed in October 1980. Well served by public transport and with its own car parking facilities, it remained a popular entertainment centre for a large suburban area of mixed social character. <laughs>